Hey everybody, Patrick here. Um, for some of you on the channel, you might know that we like to build stuff here at Waterless. Um, we like build projects, we like doing kind of just, I don't know, fun stuff. And about three years ago, we built a wooden teardrop camper. And we did it with our friends using a kit from Chesapeake Lightcraft. And we used it on a bunch of film trips. We've used it for you know, like in-person events for Waterlust. We've um, we kind of set it up as almost like a like a mobile store. Um, we used it for documentaries, and we've used it just for you know just for fun, just for going on road trips. And uh, with the pandemic, it's really really useful because we're going to use it again and go visit some family up north, and uh, we're going to be able to live kind of completely off the grid and stay away from people as we should be socially distancing. And I thought it'd be a really cool time. It's been almost three years to the day to give people an update, how the teardrop's holding up, um, what parts about it we really like, what parts maybe we might do a little differently if we were building one ourselves. So I thought it'd be really fun to do a comprehensive full review of the teardrop camper three years after building it. If you like this kind of content, you want us to keep making it, the best way to support us is to head over to waterless.com and, and buy some of our products. We've got super comfortable t-shirts. We've got these awesome board shorts made out of recycled materials and all of our products help uh, communicate science and support marine conservation and marine science. So that's the best way that you can support us. And by doing so, it tells us you like this stuff and we'll keep doing it. So um, first step, this has been in, the, in the, the carport for a couple of months. So it's a little, a little grimy and I need to give it a bath and wash it off before we walk through it. Um, one quick thing before I do that is the cover. Having a cover for your teardrop, especially here in like the beating Florida sun, is really important. Even though we, if you remember from the build series, we had our teardrops um, clear coated with like a UV protection car paint. Um, but even that, the sun like just beats down on it. It'll, it'll destroy it over time. So having a cover is really, really important. Um, and there were sort of two options to go. We could get like a really, really nice cover that was expensive, or we could get like kind of just a cheap one. And we, we went for the cheap one I forget how much it was. I think it was like, it was under a hundred bucks. And uh, it's definitely not like great. It's like slowly falling apart, but it's lasted, you know, three years so far. So no complaints with that. Um, I know CLC makes a, a much nicer cover that would probably last forever. So that's another route to go. Um, but so far this pretty cheap cover has, fits the teardrop well and uh, it's lasted sufficiently for us. So I'll put a link to that cover if they still make it, hopefully they do in the uh in the descriptions below but for now let's uh get the cover off and uh give it a quick bath only thing i you have to be aware of with the cover is we have solar panels on our um on our teardrop so if they're covered up they're, they can't generate any electricity so you just got to be aware of that with respect to your to your battery and make sure that it's getting either trickle charge from another source or you know you let it get some sun every once in a while here's some of the damage and just kind of the wear and tear that we have in this cover um you know it's it's just like kind of a light felt material it's not terribly durable um so it is starting to kind of fall apart in places the places that it's most susceptible to damage i find is these edges of the uh the solar panel so we put some cardboard pieces to protect that but you know the main part's doing okay but it is you know it is slowly falling apart but you know for under 100 bucks not too bad so the way i'm going to do this review is i'm just going to start from the back and work my way forward and try to cover everything so let's start with the galley all right so here we are in the galley and this is by far my favorite part of the teardrop mostly because we got in the habit of of getting stickers of all the places that we visited and i guess i should provide a little bit of context so how much have we used this teardrop um so it's been three years and i'd say we haven't kept track of the miles specifically but i i would say we're in the ballpark of twenty thousand miles um we went all the way out from florida to um to yellowstone we went all around montana we went up to canada um, we've gone up to new england a couple of times we've done a bunch of stuff in florida so we've put a fair amount of miles on this and a lot of it was not gentle miles. Some of it was um, pretty bumpy. Um, and we got in the habit, I love getting stickers wherever we're, you know, if we're going to a brewery or a restaurant. And uh, this is just so much fun because every time, you know, we're getting ready right now for this next trip, I get to like kind of relive all these memories. So this is definitely my favorite part of the teardrop. 
And that's what the teardrop's all about. It's about making memories and, uh, and having adventures. So, um, overall the galleys held up really well. Um, we did, we did fiberglass this. Some people don't fiberglass this section. And I have heard reports, um, if you put your battery up here, which we do not, we just have, this is pretty much empty just with the electrical components for inside. Um, if you put your battery here, that's a lot of weight that can kind of bounce up and down on this piece of wood. And uh, so we fiberglass ours, and I know not everybody has, but we're really glad we did. We've had absolutely no structural problems. And uh, we, this is the paint from the, the car dealer dealership guy. And uh, it's held up really good. And, and we cook on this and this has been really abused. We drag ovens and stuff on it. So it's, it's held up really well and really glad we did that. Um, we did have to replace um, these guys, these little like uh, springs um, after a year two is about when they died. So that was one thing that had to be replaced. The thing I'm probably most like disappointed with back here are these lights. And you can see I'm using some tape to hold these up. We used, these are like little strip LEDs that looked really cool when we put them on. We ran them here, then across here and there, and they would like, they really lit it up in a cool way, but they're just not very well made. And they're, the adhesive on one side just eventually falls off. And that will be a theme throughout this review. I think you'll detect is in a lot of things that rely on glue just haven't lasted very long. Um, and I think a lot of that has to do with the Florida heat. Uh, I think if you're using glue on something, there's a good chance it's going to fail. So that would be my recommendation would be to lean more towards mechanical solutions as opposed to glue solutions. So these strip lights, not a huge fan. You can see we have them under here and they're, they're not sticking. So we, we want to replace these with something better, um, but we're not really sure what it is. We might put like a fixed light here or I don't know if you have any ideas shoot them in the comments let us know what you think another thing that has failed is this ceiling gasket and again when you look at it all this is is a a tube and has glue on one side and this is like a little like piece of metal that clamps onto this edge and it's starting to fail here and it's starting to fail here and this is problematic because this prevents water there's a little you know drainage here this prevents water from coming in so you can see a little bit of water got in it when i just washed it um replacing this shouldn't be a big deal like i think we can just get a new one or we could probably just we could probably get new glue and just re-glue it um but again if this hadn't been relying on glue it probably would have survived though you know this stuff uses glue, uses glue and it's still fine so i don't know anything that has glue is is suspect but um yeah so that's the galley overall super happy with it no real problems other than those you know kind of glue issues moving down to our storage unit now if you remember we made this custom storage unit and i think we were the first people to ever do this and we we told the guys at clc about it and we we're like this is the way to go and it's super awesome and we're really happy about it and since then, CLC has come out with their own version of this. So they actually have an add-on so you can build your own. And I 100% totally, totally recommend getting it because having this storage below is hugely important. So we built ours custom and one problem we had was with this drop down. So this is just a piece of plywood and it, I had put a little bit of epoxy on it just to kind of seal it, but I didn't, I didn't fiberglass it because I didn't think it needed to be. Um, and it held up okay, but over time, um, we started having some splitting in this plywood and it started to kind of like split apart and, and break. And I would have just replaced it, but we had all of these stickers on it. And like the stickers again are like all the memories and I didn't want to lose that. So I ended up taking this off and, and like really carefully embalming it in epoxy. So now it actually has like a really thick layer of epoxy all around it. And I might varnish it also just to protect it more. But so now I think it's like totally pretty bulletproof. But in retrospect, anything that we made custom with that plywood, um, we needed to do a better job protecting it. Um, and that's there's some other parts that we'll get to that are along that same theme. But um, the drawers themselves, they're a little dirty, but they are holding up great. This one definitely needs to be cleaned. We might clean them and 
do a fresh coat of, um, of uh, Total Boat topside paint. That's what we used here. Um, this stuff gets abused because we put like, you know, propane tanks and ovens and just like equipment. Um, but without these drawers, I think the teardrop as a whole um, would lose a significant amount of its utility value. So um, having these is a must. And if I were building one, I probably wouldn't do what we did. I'd probably go and get the kit. If they had had the kit uh, at CLC when we did this, we would have just used theirs. But um, ours lasted is lasting fine. We used um, cedar and the cedar is like so resilient. Um, we haven't had to treat this. It's just the cedar is awesome. Um, the problem we have usually has to do with like the plywood. So if you remember the construction, you know, you can see some of these ply, there's a plywood sandwich, like plywood, cedar, plywood, and the edges of the plywood tend to be problematic. That's where things start to kind of go south. But, um, but overall, like I'm pretty happy with, with how this has survived and, uh, it's dirty, but we'll clean it up. But I think it still has, you know, we, we put some fresh paint on it. I think it could go another 10 years if we just take care of it. So, but an absolute must to have the storage units, the storage drawers are epic. This is a more specific thing. Um, these are the mushroom vents to help bring in fresh air when you're sleeping so that you don't, you know, die of carbon dioxide poisoning, which is a, an issue. I mean, that's something you gotta, it's such a small space, you gotta be careful. And the these have held up fine, but the one thing we did differently is the original teardrop build by CLC calls for two in the back and two in the front. And we had read some stories of people getting water ingress on the ones in the front and uh, it causing leaking. So we decided to just do two and with the, we also have the, the vent fan on the roof, which I'll show you, but between those things, we've ha we've been fine with ventilation. Obviously we have not died of carbon dioxide poisoning. So um, two seems to be enough with us, um, as long, I think, as you have that, the, uh, the rooftop vent. Moving forward, just looking structurally at the, like the finish of the body of the teardrop. Um, this has held up really well in most places. So the, the car paint spray, I think really has helped it get protected some areas where we've had two areas where we've had problems area number one is where we were sloppy where we were put a screw in and i knew this was going to be a problem when we did it but when we screwed this in a little you know it's not a very big wall thickness a tiny bit of the of the screw like poked through barely and that over time has become a source of sort of like maybe a delamination bubble but you can see it it becomes like over time much more visible um so that's one issue and the other, and we have another one up here, and this is just our own fault. We were just rushed and sloppy about, you know, getting this together when we were rushing to, to leave Miami three years ago. Um, the other area that I think is something to be more aware of is we've started to see a little bit of, you can see like some of the paint kind of, or I don't know if it's a paint or the epoxy is starting to come up at the edges. So we didn't really get good seals along the inside corner of the wood where we cut it and you can see it here you can see a little bit there it's the biggest place we have the problem with is the doors so you see we have some here and i think what happened and we got a bunch down here and it's not like it's not like bad if i look closely I, it's not like fully delaminating or anything it's you can just tell that like some moisture is getting into the wood there. And I think what, what we could have been more careful about is making sure after we cut the doors that we really sealed up and did multiple coats on the on this raw inside surface. Um, we've got a little bit of, you know, like a little bit of crackage here, you know, nothing major. Anything that's like away from edges is great. No problems. Um, but again, these the most prominent stuff is on the door and along this edge. So if I were doing this again, after I cut the doors and before, you know, when we were getting it painted, I would have really been careful to to coat this this you know this entire edge inside and out because that's the area of kind of ingress over time. And I don't know, this might be a question for the CLC guys. I'm curious what they think about this. And maybe there, there might've been an instruction for that that we, that we just missed. Um, 
down below everything's good you know the paint got the top side paint here boat paint that's been holding up great um, no complaints there all right let's take a look at the wheels um, these are the actual the original wheels that we we got the with the teardrop and every time we go on a, on like a, a long road trip i'm like i'm gonna change the wheels because i just i don't know i get freaked out that the wheel's gonna explode and I'm gonna have to deal with it on the road in the middle of nowhere. Um, but every time I've gone and done it and I've looked at the looked at the treads and looked at the wheel, I've been pretty surprised by how good a shape the wheels are still in. Um, these are the bigger wheels. Um, I forget the diameter, they're the, the bigger option that CLC offers. And that I like that because there's less rotation, so it, it loads the bearings less, so it, it'll last longer. Um, and you know, we've been really happy. I've been very surprised with how well these wheels have lasted. Um, again, three years, 20, 25,000 miles so far. Um, and I'm planning to take them on this trip. You know, we have a spare tire and I, I don't see any major cracks and um, overall they've held it really well. Um, we have, we got a grease gun and we make sure that we pack fresh grease um, into the bearings before uh, every trip and I think that's really important just to make sure your bearings don't overheat you don't have any any problems there but wheels are great bearings are great um, electrical back here no problems at all here we're underneath just taking a look at the axle if you remember we um, we flipped our axle so the axle went above um, these springs whereas the way it came normally is it went underneath and we didn't like that because the whole teardrop was sitting up really high and with the storage box it made it harder to access the galley so we we switched we switched these which gives less clearance and overall this hasn't been a problem but you can see we have bottomed it out a couple times you can see that the that that wear and tear there on the frame um, so we have pushed the limit of this um, if we go to the other side you can see some there um, but I've never noticed this to be like a significant problem. Um, I would take the benefits of what we got out of that height difference for this wear and tear. I wouldn't say this is um, catastrophic by any means. Um, and it makes the galley much more accessible. Um, other than that, the clearance has been fine. I don't see any issues with, we haven't bottomed out um, over rocks on this, on this axle. So that's been good. Um, and overall, the springs look okay, a little rusty. You know, they might need, might consider replacing those down the road. Um, but overall, axle and, uh, and suspension seems fine. Um, underneath here is the, uh, the underside of the storage box. And here we use, we didn't use the car paint. This is just boat paint. And it's gross, it's dirty, but it's, um, if I take a cloth to it, it'll clean up, it'll clean up all, all nice. And it's, there's no structural problems here. I think the, uh, I was, I really thought that the boat paint was gonna get pretty abused by the kick up from the road, but overall it's been, it's been totally fine. So I would, uh, I wouldn't do that any differently if I did it again. All right, let's go inside. And inside really has been pretty much drama free. Um, electronic system, which we'll cover more um, in, the, in, in a bit, works great. All of these fans, I need to turn the power on. All the fans work awesome. Overhand fan, you know, works awesome. You know, everything, everything in here electronically is working really well. The only problem that we've had in here, and we knew, we kind of knew it was gonna be a problem, was with these panels. And it's, the panels rely on glue. We use 3M Super 77 um, as recommended. And over time, they started to do this. They started to peel off. Now, Fiona, um, she's the one that put these panels on. She said when she put the panels on, she purposely sprayed them lightly, like less than, than the instructions said to. And she did that because she thought she might wanna take them off. And remember, we have a lot of electronic, you can see like the wires under here. And we didn't know if maybe we wanted to like put insulation or something down the road. We weren't like totally sold on these panels. And one reason we weren't sold, you can see these things like scuff up really easily. And so this is probably my biggest, my biggest gripe with the, uh, with the, the kit is I feel like these just like kind of aren't that nice. Like the rest of the teardrop so nice. And then these things, especially if a, a dog and we have our dogs with us, when we go, they scratch these up. 
So that is something we have talked a lot about replacing. And on this trip, you can see we are actually testing out a solution. So these are these pillows. Um, and these, these pillows are awesome. They, they're like kind of like wedge pillows and they fill that gap up and makes it way, way more comfortable to sleep. Um, so the solution, Fiona's really spearheading this, is she got some really cool cloth, very like really sturdy cloth that she has covered the panels in and then re-glued them down using, I think it's Super 80, the, the adhesive. Actually, let me go find it, we have it. Here it is, 3M Super 80. And this is, this is the stuff we're using now. And uh, Fiona likes it a lot more. She says it's more resilient and uh, she thinks it'll last longer. So we'll see, we have a couple test panels here um, and she's put some in here and they feel really nice they, and they look really nice. They, I, and the big thing is that cloth is gonna prevent this kind of like tearing and it just has like a much better, more resilient feel to it. It's nice and tight and stuck really well. So we're gonna see how the, they've been in for about, I think these have been in for about six months and they've survived the Miami summer with the heat and they're not falling down. So we think this is gonna be the solution. We thought about doing insulation and doing some really fancy solutions here, but we really don't need it. Um, we definitely don't go in like really cold weather and we've slept in this, you know, up in Northern Canada in November in like well below freezing conditions and we were fine. So we have a little space heater because we have a lot of electricity, um, but uh, overall we were fine. So we don't think we need insulation. Um, so that's the big thing we're gonna test on this trip are these panels. And if they, if they last a long time, which they so far they are, we're gonna replace all of them um, with those. And we're still using the, we're, to do this, we're using the existing panels, we take them off. And then Fiona has a whole process where she like covers it carefully with the cloth, um, wraps it around, and uh, I don't know if she does any sewing on it, and then and then reapplies it with that with that super eighty, and uh, that works really well. Uh, mattress is still great. Uh, Fiona made these cool. These are really cool, um, little like Velcro um, window guards, and they you can see they have the Velcro there, and that's just to keep light out in the morning if we're camping somewhere, or if we want to kind of ninja camp where no one can see us. And uh, these are really useful. I really like these, and it's good for the dogs because what the dogs can see out the window and they see a squirrel, they get really excited. So having that kind of like closed off is uh, is nice to keep them calm. Just moving a little bit further forward, this is our front storage unit and uh, this has been great. No problems here. Um, this is just the the Western Red Cedar on the side and uh, and this plywood door. Just like the back door, I had to rework this with, a, with a epoxy and it's still like, you can kind of see it's starting to peel up on the edges here. So there it goes. So this is gonna have to be replaced. I just, this kind of thin plywood just doesn't get the job done. And moving, that is a good segue into this, which is our biggest structural problem we have on, on the teardrop. This is the, our front box and we built this plywood, let's get a good shot of this, like a plywood um, kind of, I don't know, table that everything sits on so we can have the shower and everything. And this is, I think, half inch, three quarter inch um, ply. And we did an epoxy, we just painted it, and it is completely rotting out. Like if I, if I like, if I like stood on this, it would just shatter. So this needs to be replaced. And at the time when we built this, I knew in my heart that if we didn't fiberglass it, that it wasn't gonna survive long. Um, but we were in a rush and I just didn't prioritize it. Um, so we're actually gonna, we're gonna replace this. We're gonna unbolt the box. We're gonna take it off and we're gonna replace this with marine grade starboard, which is actually like plastic. I can show you, we have it over here. So here's what we're gonna replace it with. This is marine grade starboard. Um, this is fancy stuff, it's expensive stuff. This sheet, this is this is three quarter inch thick and this is a huge piece that costs like $300. And I didn't really wanna buy this, but this is like the proper solution. So we're gonna cut this and turn it into that table, and then we're it'll be it'll last forever. We'll never have to replace it. Um, I'm also going to use this for those front doors with the plywood. I'm going to replace it with starboard, um, just so I don't have to deal with that those little plywood doors kind of degrading over time. So, in in retrospect, I should have just done this at the beginning, um, but I was being cheap at the time and I didn't want to do it. Um, but this is a non-problem for people. Uh, if you use the CLC kit, I'm sure their doors are much more durable than our doors. We've got the big kahuna shower here. This has been um, super awesome. 
Um, really, really useful for washing dishes, for cleaning off gear. You know, my only issue with it is it gets kind of grimy. Um, you know, you can see it gets kind of gross. And if I look in here, it's like kind of gross. So every time we go on a road trip, I've got to, you know, break out the bleach and the cleaner and I give this like a real cleansing scrub. Um, but overall, even out here in the elements, it takes the full, you know, the full abuse of the highway. Um, it still lasts great. Um, I, t I, I take this off and I store it in the side door when we're driving. Um, but overall, it, you know, these are advertised as being like bulletproof and so far that has been the case. Moving on to the heart of the system, which is also probably the thing I'm most like proud of is the electrical system. And this was the, this is, you know, the custom designed electrical system we did. We still have our little rain guard um, that just helps anything drip, prevent drippage. And overall, like I'm, I could not be happier with this system. It's still running super, super well. We have never had a problem with it. Um, battery is still doing awesome, um, getting full charge, full capacity. The Xantrax system, which gives us our AC power, has worked flawlessly. We've, we've pushed it to its limits, running various devices, electrical tools, sanding, vacuums, all this stuff. Um, it has been just awesome, which is not surprising. I mean, Xantrex has the best reputation in the industry. Um, the CTEC system has worked flawlessly, um, pulling electricity um, off of the hitch when we're driving from the alternator in the truck or pulling off of the solar panel when, when, it's, when they're solar. And you can see right now it's lit up. We're charging off of solar. Um, we have, I, we did blow some fuses. One time we hit... We hit something, I think we were in like Denver, Colorado, and we like cut a, a wire, got severed, and we blew a fuse, um, but the fuse worked and it, it did everything it was supposed to do. So, you know, overall, like this is the thing, if I could say what I'm most happy with, with the teardrop, it would be this whole situation. And if I were ever to build one again, I would build it exactly the same way. And we've even talked about if we ever get a boat or build like a small boat, we're gonna probably build more or less the same the same type of system into the boat. Um, the solar panels have worked great. Why don't we, I'll hop up and take a look at those. We're up top here with the Renogy solar panels and these things are great. I mean, they're just bulletproof. I'm really glad we went with these hard hard ones instead of like a soft one, um, cause the hard ones just, they're just bulletproof and uh, they're doing great. No problems, still getting great charge out of them. You know, you gotta make sure that they stay clean. Um, but they're doing great, and uh, the racks here are doing great. No problems at all with those. Um, structurally, everything up here is is awesome, and we're really happy we have the solar panels, especially when we're like, we want to take, you know, the 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 teardrop off the hitch, and we want to like just kind of live um, driving around if we're going to stay in the space for a little while, and we don't have shore power. Having the panels just keeps everything, you know, everything charged. So. It's, uh, I definitely would do this exactly the way we did it if um, we're building it again. Up on the hitch, if you remember, we have this um, custom adapter that allows us to connect our teardrop battery um, to the, the battery of the truck so that we can charge the, the teardrop off the alternator through the CTEC system. And uh, overall, this, this has worked great. This, this like beefy connector has lasted well. Um, this is the section we broke when we hit that mystery something or other in Colorado. Um, and that was actually pretty tricky to, to fix on the road because it's such thick gauge wire. Um, but overall, this has worked really well. What did break, and you might remember from our, one of our videos, was we fried the alternator on the truck because um, we were pulling a lot more juice out of the truck. And we were in Missouri and uh, the alternator on our 2004 Silverado just kicked the bucket and we had to, uh, we had to replace it but we replaced it with a, a high output alternator, which was you know, hundred bucks, 200 bucks. It wasn't that much. And we did it ourselves. It was super easy. Um, so that's one thing to keep in mind. If you're going to do this kind of off the, uh, you know, charging off your car solution, um, just keep in mind, you might be taxing your, your vehicle alternator and you might look into replacing it with a high output model. The last thing to review is the ARB awning. And uh, this thing has been awesome. The only thing, only complaint I have is these zippers um, broke. So I have to, the, the zipper still works fine. And I always make sure I put a little WD-40 in there. It's, it's not corroded or anything, um, but the actual like zipper head broke off, no big deal. Um, but this actually has proven to be super, super useful, uh, mainly for in Florida for rain and sun, um, mostly actually rain. 
um, cause it helps keep, if you're camping, it helps keep your kind of entrance and exit area, uh, dry. Uh, we haven't, we don't really use it all that much, so much for sun. The putting the little guards on the windows prevents the sunlight. Um, but for rain, they've been like super critical. And, uh, but yeah, it's like, you don't even know it's here and it's, it's super, super bomb proof. It's just really durable except for the zippers. Um, and uh, I'm really, really been happy with it and it's a perfect size for the, for the teardrop. So that's it. That's a full walkthrough of our teardrop trailer three years into using it. I hope this review was helpful, gave you some ideas of things that worked well, things that maybe could be better. If there's anything that I missed, if you have any questions about, you know, anything regarding the teardrop, um, by all means, throw them in the comments below and um, we're pretty responsive. I'll be sure to to answer any questions for you aspiring builders. But uh, overall, we're really happy with how this turned out. It's been a really useful tool and um, kind of adventure tool, brought us a lot of happiness, a lot of memories. Um, so we're really, we really recommend it. We think it's a really great project for folks. And uh, so anyway, thanks for watching. Um, if you like this kind of content, again, support us at waterless.com. That's the best way to support us. And uh, we really appreciate all the, all the questions, all the enthusiasm. And uh, anyway, have a, uh, have a good one. Bye.